New Orleans, Louisiana at the SCTE show at the Adtran booth. I'm here with Robert from Adtran, and SCTE is as, as much a broadband show as anything, yeah. and all the cable operators are trying to uh, modify their architecture. Uh, they're, they're going with DAA, Distributed Access Architecture, trying to uh, uh, handle the broadband demand. Um, what role does fiber play in this, uh, in this move to DAA? Yeah, absolutely. So any DAA architecture is kind of underpinned by fiber deeper into the network. And so you'll hear a lot of the talk today, this week, about extended spectrum DOCSIS, full duplex DOCSIS, the kind of DOCSIS 3.1 to 4.0 evolution. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, fiber the prim is also going to play a big role, whether that's 10 gig EPON, XGS PON, GPON, or any combination of those. Um, you'll have a mix and match. I don't think it'll be a one-size-fits-all solution. You'll actually end up with a multi-technology uh, mix when you're looking at these networks of the future. And then even technologies like fixed wireless will start to play a bigger role as they evolve that network. So it's going to be pushing fiber deeper in the network and then whether that's full fiber to the home, fiber with the combination of fixed wireless or a DOCSIS type solution, it'll be all of the above, I believe. That's interesting because all the cable operators are evolving their networks at different speeds, at different paces, so it makes sense they would have a little bit of everything. Um, how does Adtran um, help cable operators to sort of get to where they're going with their uh, fiber deployments? Yeah, you're right. I mean, it, it's not. that's one of the reasons you won't see a one-size-fits-all architecture. Everybody's starting from a different point. Mm -hmm. If you have a large legacy installed base of set-top boxes and head-ends and stuff, your evolution path may look different than someone that's expanding their footprint and going into new areas. You know, from an Adtran perspective, we try to make that easy. So a lot of times with versus say an incumbent fiber operator, a lot of times it's all central based, uh, exchange based OLTs. Now you're starting to move out into the outside plant. Electronics like strand mount OLTs become more and more important for an MSO. Also, how do they integrate with their existing back office system that's heavily DOCSIS based today? So it's a lot of it's, how do I transition DOCSIS provisioning into a full fiber network? How do I put strand mount enclosures with fiber access technologies to make it easier to deploy fiber deeper in the network? And so what Adtran's expertise really, we have a background in a lot of those technologies and we've kind of brought that forward so that MSOs, whether you're a, a traditional incumbent deploying in a brownfield type scenario or a targeted greenfield scenario or even extending your footprint, we'll have different solutions that kind of make it easy for an MSO to move to a full fiber network. Okay, well since you guys are at the access point of the network, you're obviously um, in a good position to see what's going on in the connected home. There's yeah. so much happening there. Um, what are some of the trends you guys are observing as, as more and more people are uh, connecting more devices in the home? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the most important aspects, and it doesn't matter if you're an MSO or one of the traditional incumbent operators or you know, large, small, whatever, managing that in-home experience is going to become more and more important, especially as more customers move to over-the-top video type deployment architectures. A lot of that video ultimately ends up being deployed wirelessly throughout the home. So you're talking about yeah. small Roku devices or right. Amazon Fire Sticks or now the main delivery mechanism versus a traditional set-top box. And so what that introduces now, while there's a lot of cost savings and efficiency and flexibility that it affords, it also introduces maybe some problem points that you didn't know you had before, which is how, how stable is the Wi-Fi? How, what performance is it gaining? As you move to 4K and cloud gaming and some of these other applications, you're going to put a lot of strain on that Wi-Fi network, much more so than we've seen in the past. So now it's how do I get really robust managed Wi-Fi? So technologies like mesh Wi-Fi and then interoperability with uh, technologies like Easy Mesh and stuff will become more and more important. And then going beyond just the mesh Wi-Fi and the Wi-Fi itself, it's actually the analytics. How do you get streaming telemetry data? How do you get more information so that you can proactively not only diagnose issues, but proactively optimize the Wi-Fi performance in the network. And so Adtran, that's, that's one of our major investment areas as well as we try to help operators not only build out a, a bigger pipes in the broadband access side of things, but actually you know, improvise uh, the Wi-Fi side of things inside the home. Okay, so you're helping them uh, with their fiber in the deep into the network, and you're helping exactly. them all the way uh, inside the home with yeah. the mesh network. Yeah, and then well. actually stitching all that together with some management solutions so that you have that end-to-end -end visibility, and so that you're not really, this kind of segregation of the different teams that manage the in-home and the right. access network, that's gonna all start to dissolve because you're gonna have to have solutions that look end-to-end -end and optimize the network from end-to-end. -end. Okay, Robert, thanks so much for talking with us yeah, today. Yeah, absolutely, Phil. Thanks.